In December, I went to the 2024 American Speech and Hearing Association Convention, which is one of the largest professional development events for speech language pathologists. I love events like these because I learned so much about the current cutting edge research in gender affirming voice care. And today, you're going to learn about the top three most mind blowing things that I learned. Hi, I'm Renee, and I am not a speech language pathologist. I am, however, a gender affirming voice teacher. To understand the differences and similarities between SLPs and gender affirming voice teachers, let's quickly look at the Venn diagram of speech language pathology and voice pedagogy. The SLP side is a healthcare discipline, which includes the treatment of voice disorders, upper airway issues, issues with language processing and development, alternative communication, just to name a few things, because it's a huge field with a lot of variety. On the voice pedagogy side, we have teachers and coaches like me who teach singing, acting, public speaking, and more. And where these two disciplines overlap, we have gender affirming voice care. I was invited to the ASHA convention to speak on a panel of gender affirming voice care providers who are themselves transgender. I know, listening to trans people about trans people, revolutionary. Other groups should really try it. Out of everyone involved in the panel, I was the only one on the voice teaching side of the Venn diagram. Everyone else was a speech language pathologist. Shout out to my fellow panelists, Ruchi Capilla, Jay Bernado, Jennifer Cleary, and the two organizers, Bex von During and Claire Henderson. I've noticed that SLPs and gender affirming voice teachers are sometimes seen as being at odds, almost like we're in competition. Now, before we do this, let's go over the ground rules. But attending ASHA and meeting so many incredible SLPs invested in doing gender affirming work showed me just how much we can learn from and support each other. Thank you. I never felt out of place and lots of SLPs came up to me and told me that they use my free resources like my practice games book and my progress tracker with their clients. And I won't lie, that was actually super cool. There were literally thousands of talks, panels, courses, and other things that I could have gone to at this conference over the course of a weekend. Imagine an anime or gaming convention, but instead of dealer halls, it's just voice nerds. In the end, I went to about 10 talks that covered a wide set of trans voice topics. So let's finally get to my top three takeaways from ASHA 2024. The first talk I wanna talk about is Get a Load of This, Promoting Self-Efficacy in Gender Affirming Voice Through Cognitive Load Training by Claire Henderson and Bex von During. And it was all about using neuroscience research to create practical strategies to enhance learning outcomes in trans voice training. It can be easy to think about trans voice training as merely a muscular exercise. We're training our voice, which is a physical instrument to be played in a new way. But trans voice training is also a workout for many different types of brain function, sensation, perception, motor learning, attention, memory, executive function, language skills, and more. If you don't integrate these types of cognition into your training, you're not training in a way that replicates how you will really be using your voice in everyday life. This was an issue I noticed pretty early on in my trans voice teaching career, which led me to create one of my free books on my website, Cognitive Load Games for Trans Voice Work. Secret lore here, but I had to rename that book to Practice Games for Endurance in Trans Voice Work because you would not believe the number of emails I got asking me what a cognitive load game is. What was that? Uh, what was that? This book is filled with games that challenge you to maintain your target voice or whatever characteristic you're working on while problem solving, ideating, calculating, memorizing, and during many other cognitive load tasks. This type of training helps you to bridge the gap between practicing your target voice in a vacuum and using it in a complex conversation. It's basically a way of introducing some complexity like you might experience out in public, but without any of the stakes or extra baggage that entails. You can get it for free right now at the link in the description. Next, I went to a panel called Essential Topics in Gender Affirming Voice Care 2.0 presented by Desi Gutierrez. And this panel featured speech language pathologist, a laryngologist, and a voice surgeon. This panel was Q&A style, so we covered a lot, but what stuck out to me was just how much treatment pathways vary from person to person. 
Some people only need hormone therapy, some need voice therapy or lessons, some need surgery, and some need a combination of all of the above. But it was very cool to see how interdisciplinary treatment of voice dysphoria can be, and how people in the various disciplines that treat voice dysphoria are working together to create the best experience they can for trans people. Oh my God, no one's gonna watch this as soon as I say therapy endpoints. They're all gonna check out. Yeah. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> The question for the panel that really drove this home for me was about therapy endpoints. The panel was asked, how do you know when a patient is ready for discharge? And they replied that their patients need anywhere between three and 35 voice therapy sessions. Now I know some of you beginners just heard 35 and had a bit of an out of body experience, but stick with me here. I loved hearing this because it really reflected the reality I see in my work as well. I'll see one student for only a few sessions and others for years and also literally everything in between. Some people need regular lessons every week while others see me once a year just to check in and ask a few questions. I think this can create confusion for someone just starting out because you may not know what you should be aiming for in voice therapy or lessons. My experience as a teacher and also what was reflected by the panel is that you're generally aiming for three things. One, to use voice training techniques on your own without prompting. Two, you feel some degree of satisfaction with the result. Not perfection, but you're starting to like what you hear. And three, you can monitor your own voice, tell when things feel weird, and generally troubleshoot issues on your own. In my experience, students who have achieved all three of these things no longer need my services. They may still feel they have a ways to go, but they can usually do so without help from a teacher. If this takes a few months, that's great. If it takes years, that is also fine and normal. And if you're not there yet, voice is my job. So private lessons or one of my courses could be for you. The links are in the description. I went to one other talk that really highlighted the uniqueness of everyone's trans voice journey, and that was called Embracing the Gray, Case Study Explorations in Gender Affirming Voice and Communication by Ruchi Capilla and Jennifer Cleary. This talk looked at individual cases of folks seeking gender affirming voice care and reminded me of a lot of things. One, many people are learning about trans voice way before they're ready to use these techniques publicly. Two, many people don't have a voice goal at all. They're exploring trans voice training to discover what aligns with their sense of self. Three, many people are neurodivergent and creative sensory or play-based approaches to the work may be more effective. And four, Many people have voice goals that are as unique as their gender. They may want a blend of vocal characteristics, not just stock, femme, or mask, which as a non-binary person myself is why I made this. Now, on to the third and possibly most mind-blowing thing that I learned at ASHA this year. Okay, this is not at all practical voice training information, but it is extremely cool and cutting edge transition related research. Andy Doctor presented research out of UC San Diego, which showed that targeted injections of testosterone directly into the vocal folds can effectively masculinize the voice without the systemic side effects of traditional hormone therapy. This is mind blowing to me. What we always say about testosterone therapy is you don't get to pick and choose which effects you get. So if you want the deep voice, you may have to deal with a receding hairline or acne or some other less desirable side effect. However, this study followed eight subjects who received the injections and found that they had faster voice masculinization results compared to systemic testosterone and avoided systemic effects of tea. I can really only speculate as to why this is. Maybe the tea is all being used up by the androgen receptors in the vocal folds and it's not getting to the rest of the body. It's hard to say. You're not a doctor, are you? I, I should be. Okay. Now, obviously this was an initial study and more research is needed. We still need to see the outcomes of this treatment in a study with a larger sample size, as well as study the long-term effects. But I think it is very promising and extremely cool. And it makes me wonder what else is possible in the future of transition related care. Intracordal T injections were not even remotely on my radar before this conference. So what else could be possible? Please speculate wildly with me in the comments. 2024 was a big year of firsts for me when it came to conferences and speaking. It was the first time I attended and spoke at the American Speech and Hearing Association conference. And I didn't even mention this before, but I also attended and spoke at the Philadelphia Trans Wellness Conference for the first time last year. 
In 2025, I'm already slated to speak at Moving Trans Histories Forward, a conference hosted by the Chair in Transgender Studies at the University of Victoria in March. But at the end of the day, what all this speaking at and attending conferences has shown me is just how many people are united in the fight for trans healthcare, trans justice, and trans equality, which is something I think we all need to feel right now. You know, trans people are a small percentage of the population, but when you put us all together along with our allies in a room, it's clear just how much power we have to enact change and create a beautiful world worth living in. I'm excited to get out in the world more in 2025 and especially to do more speaking. So if you have any recommendations for conferences or events you'd like to see me at, please leave me a comment below. If you found this video helpful or interesting, don't forget to sign up for my mailing list. It's where I share exclusive resources and updates to help you transform your voice and reach your goals. Click the link in the description to join today. That's all for today. I've been Renee, and I hope this helps. That wins. Yeah, that is wild. That might have been something getting blown into the street. Nope, just the wind. Does it look weird that this just appeared in my hand though? Like we or like it can also be kind of funny if it does. <laughs> okay. Here. But you're you the, you're rolling now. Yes. Okay. Woo, we are we are doing this. We really <laughs> are doing this.